hey guys, send me with another video here. So today we'll be talking about PowerPay, which is a payment platform or a plugin if you wish to call it as, which can receive payments from inside teams. So let's say you have an app which needs a payment solution or you want to receive payments from people, the customer, then this is the solution for it. So let's quickly look at that architecture diagram and then we'll look at it again. So the first part that we have is the Power Apps. So the ideal way to implement this was to install the Power Apps as an app inside the teams, but you need an explicit approval for doing it or if you wish other customers to install it in the same way. But for the demo purpose, we are just embedding that into the tabs part of the teams channels and which, which has the embedded checkout page within it. We also have the Power Automate for all the flows, all the different flows that we're going to look at. And obviously we need a backend uh, framework. So we use our new functions for it, which uh, has Python code in it, which does all the updates to SharePoint, uh, receiving callbacks from the checkout page, as well as storing data, logging part, and everything is taken care of with the Azure functions. And SharePoint, we are just using leveraging SharePoint list for storing all the checkout IDs, uh, invoice, uh, name, due date, and all the other details related to that particular invoice within the SharePoint list. And we also have an adaptive card usage, which has to be approved. So when you send a trade invoice, it goes to one of the senior managers and then they can approve or reject it. And only then you would see the approval list or only when you can make the payment. So the pay now button will be enabled only if there's an explicit approval from a senior manager. So that's it. Uh, let's start with the demo and see how it goes. Okay, we have embedded this checkout page as a tab inside this particular generate invoice channel. So what it does is kind of loads up the entire power apps into this particular part. So what you can do is you can enter a title and then give the name of the company, let's say Microsoft, and then let's take um, Azure AD Mobile 22. This is the building title or any title that you wish to give. And then you can select a new date, let's say 31, and then click OK. And then the amount, let's say $34.75. And then when you click on send invoice, so what it does is it triggers a power automate flow, which actually hits our Azure function. So we do have an Azure function endpoint which is embedded in it. So it sends an air post request to that particular endpoint and then we receive the item ID from that. So item ID, we updated the SharePoint. So we have that 27 as the last ID now, but we'll get a 28 once we hit on send. So this is just an animation to show that it is loading or it is under processing. So once that is done, we'll see 28 is great enough. And once you go back to the SharePoint, we do refresh if it doesn't update. So that is it. 28 has been created and the day name of it. Uh, which customer it is, and then the cost of it, and then we also have an invoice number and checkout ID. So this checkout ID is coming from the payment gateway. This will let us see how it is embedded into the teams. So this should be uh, both in the service part and as well as the customer part, but for the sake of demo, I'm showing it in the same tenant. So as you can see, so this part also sends a adaptive card to it. So this waits until uh, we hit S or no. So we also see that uh, there's a run that has ran. So it hits the endpoint with all the details that we have just shared, and then we pass this particular part and then output it in the format that we desire. And then this is the message that we get from the Azure functions. Actually, we created a nine new item, which is 28, which is good. And then we send this response back to the Power Apps, which we saw as an application. So this flow also waits then for approval, and then it waits for us to give. So you see the status is still running. So we need to give S or no. So we just click on S. So we click on S, and then change started and then you see this particular thing started when you click on S. So we could also see what ID and who has submitted it on an email ID of it. So let's say if there are three senior managers and you need two approvals or you need this particular person's approval, you can specify that as well. So once that is done, we update uh, the status, approve for payment, and then you also get an email to the particular senior manager or the owner of this particular account that you would see in this particular part. So there is this invoice number and 32 and this should be the same. So this is uh, auto generator random uh, number pattern that you see over here. So this is generated from the Azure function and it is updated to the SharePoint. So let's look at the actual place where we do the payment part. So this should be uh, inserted into a checkout page and this should be the admin part for again for the sake of the demo here that this could be done. So, let's say, so there's a quick filter if you don't want to scroll through all the way down. So put for payments and then you should see the last one which we created and then you can get the payment. So this is the interesting part where we have the checkout page right inside the teams. So let's give it some time to load and then so this is the page where you actually do the payment, right? So we'll get the demo card number. So this is not an official card, so this is for the demo purpose that we have. So let's do the payment. So when you click on pay now, so secure and everything. This pay checkout page comes from Azure Functions as well. So we have this particular HTML page just under when you can get request for the particular endpoint, and we just click on pay now. And then you get the invoice number back. So there's a callback from this particular checkout page to Azure Functions, which is triggered so that this status updates. So let's uh, see approve for payments that we did. And then once you click on and then it, it tells us that payment successful. So this is the ID that we saw 992. So 
this how easy it is to import this particular part into your uh, own application. So this would be again useful for people who are developing an app which needs a payment solution and you don't want to waste a lot of time, just make a component out of it. So if this wasn't a component, then it would be more easier for uh, to have uh, this payment successful and then we should see this one as successful. And then you can also view that, uh, who paid it, what is the amount, uh, who processed it, who approved it, all these details. And we also have a theme toggle over here, so you can definitely, you also have a refresh part when you want to really refresh, but it also automatically updates for some reason. So this is all about the payment part and you can read more about this in the blog, in the medium part which I would share in the description part. Uh, I hope I have shared some of the details that I, so the code is open source again, you can look up the GitHub repo and then you can make PRs out of it and thanks for watching. See you in the next one.